there won't be many days left to enjoy scenes like this, you know, the autumn splendor in all its glory. Wow. And of course, you know, not only seeing, but smelling the season of autumn. We're going to explain that. Welcome aboard, my friends. We're streaming live at the Maple Nature Reserve in Vaughan. Now, this is a real magical spot. It really is. I would say year-round, but especially during the fall season. It's 35 hectares. It's a thriving green space uh, on the Oak Ridges Moraine. And it is very unique, and we'll explain that in terms of what actually lives here in this reserve. Uh, a stunning space to explore, and as I mentioned, to smell. And that is what's going to start off our AKQ. The question today, the Anwar Knight query, is what is your favorite smell? Hmm, think about that. Um, and while you're thinking about it, I want to thank you for joining us, spending your valuable time with me here on a Friday. If you're new to the program, it's called Here and There, and this is episode 34. We stream live every Friday at 1 o'clock, and we tour around the GTA and just uncover some real amazing places. We meet amazing people and communities and tell some great stories. So it's good to have you. We have a very busy show coming up. Of course, we're also going to have um, the full forecast. It's going to be a chilly weekend. We're feeling that. I mean, it feels like fall now, finally. But frost is in the forecast. I'll outline that for you. Plus, we'll also do the uh, fall color report. Now, I'm thinking this may be the last one. We might be able to squeeze out one more for next week. But with the active weather moving in, you know, you can see a lot of the leaves are on the ground. So maybe the show, this is uh, going to be it. Uh, in many areas, but I'll give you the, uh, the report coming up. We're also going to highlight a very unique resident that calls this reserve home, and it is uh, one of the largest of its kind in North America, and also it inspired a legendary cartoon character. I think you'll be fascinated when you learn that. And we'll end off the show with a nod to nature. I'm going to take you to the off the coast of Spain to show you one of the largest bony fish on the planet. And when you see the video, you your jaw will drop. I mean, this thing is huge, but it's a good story, and that is in our uh, Nod to Nature uh, feature. So, uh, as we get things rolling here, today is also a very special today. Uh, it's Friday, October the 22nd. You know what today is? It's World Nut Day, and I don't know what it is. When I say that, I, I have this compulsion of looking at Vern. I <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but it is World Nut Day, um, a nod to nuts, if you will. And you know, there are dozens of different nuts uh, in the world. Many of them you can eat, some you can't, but generally speaking, about a dozen or so is, uh, you know, generally accepted and eaten, you know, commonly around the world. And I, one thing you may not be aware of, that scientifically speaking, tree nuts are actually categorized as fruits. So a walnut is on par with an apple. The difference is how the outer casing ripens. So when it comes to nuts, of course, it, it hardens, right? So you have the shell, whereas traditional fruits, if you will, uh, it's pliable and soft, generally speaking. But there's so many health benefits to nuts. Um, you know, it's it, it good to improving your heart health, to boost your immune system. Anybody like almonds here? Almond, almond eaters, right? Okay, so virtually every almond you eat is all thanks to bees. Bees are key to pollinating uh, the orchards, the almond orchards. And you know, California is the world producer. Over 80% of the almonds come from California. And it is the largest managed pollination process every year in the world. We are, uh, let me show you this video, in fact. I'll take you out to California right now. They literally will truck in a million hives into the state of California to do their thing, to pollinate. Uh, it's just fascinating stuff here. So it's during the springtime, you know, when the, uh, the blossoms come out, and that's typically, uh, you know, end of January uh, into March, and they're put to work. It takes about three years before a tree will produce almonds. But the thing is here, the takeaway here, is there's some controversy with it as well, because, and, and this I was just astounded, because I love my almonds, but, Every almond requires, get this guys, on average, 3.2 gallons of water. We're not talking the tree, we're talking about a single almond. For, for a, you know, a farmer to produce it, it needs so much water. It's about 12 liters of water for one almond. Um, and that's a problem because, uh, you know, California's been in a state of drought for decades. And 
you know, going forward as we look at our changing planet, there may have to be an assessment. Now, maybe there's a way they can do it in a greenhouse. I don't know. But isn't that something? A single almond, 12 liters or over three gallons of water. But anyway, uh, food for thought. It is nut day. I'm not saying don't buy almonds. Uh, you know, nuts are very healthy, but it's something to consider. So let's begin our tour here. Now you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, different elevations. So I wanted to point out, if you're coming here to the Maple Nature Reserve, this is not conducive uh, for everyone in terms of if you're in a wheelchair or in a walker. Some of the trails, and you can see actually, Ricardo will show you here, it is a bit mucky, uh, just behind you, Ricardo. So that would not work if you're in a wheelchair or a walker. But there are eight different trails uh, in, in total, and as a result, some of them will work for you and will continue our tour. But I wanted to take you uh, up into the sky, the HNTI in the sky, and give you a bird's eye perspective here. Because, you know, years ago, there's a fascinating history here. Much of the property was used as, as a Ministry of Natural Resources office and research station. In fact, some of the building is still on site. So uh, Ricardo shot some beautiful drone uh, videography, and we'll take you up to the sky here. Uh, but that research center dates back to the 1950s. Uh, those buildings, for the most part, are still on site, and, and they are looking pretty worn down. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming the municipality at some point is going to have to make a, a decision on, um, you know, also... Uh, whether they're going to tear it down or, or not. But what makes this really unique is what grows here because it is a unique collection of trees. In fact, biologists have confirmed on site they found one bald cypress, a single tree, you know, and it was quite healthy. Now, what makes that so cool? Well, those are classic trees of the deep U.S. southeast. You know, they're found in the southern swamps uh, of the U.S. Uh, so pretty cool find, uh, I, would, I would think. And that's just one example of uh, what you can see. But look at that videography here uh, from our HNTI in the sky. Look at the colors, man. Uh, this is really a beautiful spot if you want to bring the kids to explore uh, and you know because there's so many different trails you can certainly spend an afternoon that they're not uh, very long trails you can do a few of them loop around and uh, get to kick up the leaves and and take in that fall scent and I, I'm excited to share that with you coming up but uh, just a great great spot uh, in between by the way I want to say hello to a lot of our viewers who are joining us live as we stream here in Vaughn uh, Joyce Alan John Shepard uh, Alona also Margie Cindy uh, Gilles is joining us and uh, Shauna says good afternoon uh, glad to catch you live again yes we are thrilled to have you uh, absolutely and also we have uh, Linda saying hello uh, Donna, Edith is giving us uh, you know, a round of applause, and Jonathan is saying hello. Good to see you, Jonathan, as well. And uh, Shauna says, it's uh, cool out today. Yeah, we noticed that. Uh, in fact, my crew, again, I have the best crew in the world, they've started to share wardrobe. Uh, Richard, you know, said, you can have my jacket. It is Richard's, right? It's Richard's. It's, so that, look at that. And what I love here is that his ears are the only things that are about 110 degrees right now with the cans on. <laughs> so that's Vern, by the way. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're putting on the layers here. We're putting on the layers. Now, as we walk down, this is sort of an emergency uh, parking spot. But there's uh, actually, can we yeah, go down a little bit more? And you'll just see a bit of the building there. I was talking about the Ministry of Natural Resources, the building and, and you know, research center. So that building is still there and it is starting to uh, you know, really you know, get broken windows and that sort of thing. So uh, they'll be certainly making some decisions on it. But as you sort of come down this little driveway here, um, there's a pond to the right. There's a parking spot. There are bathrooms uh, that, that are usable. Vern, you used one, right? They're open? Uh, they're Oh, they are closed. Okay, so that's good to know. Um, I've taken the kids here and, and not long ago and they were still open, but maybe uh, closing for the season. But you can see here there's also a picnic area and they do camps uh, and stuff. You know, they come down here. I mean, obviously COVID things have changed a little bit, but there is parking here on the grass and up the hill. So you, you do have that. But now we're going to get into this section. It really is beautiful. Uh, Alan is saying good afternoon. Uh, also, Wendy says, happy Friday. You're near my old stomping grounds when I was growing up. Well, should we find your name carved in a tree, Wendy? Should I be looking? <laughs> also, Margaret says, happy Friday from St. Catharines. Uh, Connie says, my favorite smell is coffee brewing. Isn't that the truth? There's something about coffee. Guys, what about you? Favorite smell? Vern? 
Lilac flowers. Lilac. Do you have a bush in the back at all? We. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Ricardo, after I'm afraid to ask you, actually. No, after the rain in the summer. Oh, oh yeah. summer rain. Summer rain is just the most beautiful thing. I like that. Richard? French baking bread. Oh, nothing mm. as I good as fresh baked bread. You know, we were saying that a realtor trick when you're doing an open house, uh, they say, you know, maybe you, you, you bake some cookies before the open house so it gives that aroma because there's something about that. Richard, what was the factory you used to get cookies when we were at the big night? Dad. Dad's cookie uh, factory. Oh, you smell it coming out you, afterwards. Literally, it, that smell of those cookies all across uh, that part of Scarborough was really amazing. There's nothing better than that. I think it's the sugar, the caramelization that goes on. Um, so that is the AKQ, by the way. What is your favorite smell? And we have uh, Kathy Murray saying good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Jeanette is saying hello from Tottenham. Uh, John from Ajax. Also Rose saying hello. And Laura says smells are those things that bring back so many, so many memories. Love the smell of fresh baked goods together. Yeah. Oh, it, it, there's just something about it and I think you know you appreciate that more maybe in the winter when it's cold and you go in and you can really uh, you know pick up those scents. Um, Joyce says so many leaves are down now and Shauna says there are a few nuts in my family. <laughs> you know what that's what Christmas is all about I think right you, you reconnect uh, with the nuts. Um, Catherine says great to see you again in the forest thanks so much for doing the super show love almonds me too and um, Margaret says, I live with the nut. He might say the same. <laughs> now, Wendy says, I love the smell of the forest in the autumn and the sounds of the leaves crunching underfoot. I'm with you, absolutely. And um, also, uh, Lonnie says, I'm late. Good afternoon, uh, Ricardo and all. So saying hi to the whole crew, which is just amazing. But I wanted to get into when you, you mentioned about under the foot. Uh, and I think, actually, you know, we're going to go back here because I wanted to point something out because you can see again the different elevations um, and all the leaves that are on the ground. There are three kilometers of trails and this is all about a mature forest, a valley, you know, rolling hills, ponds and wetlands. But the one thing that I just love is that, you know, you really start to get that scent of fall and Wendy, you were touching upon that. And there is really something about that. And I've chosen here because this is where you're also going to get the moisture coming down. But, you know, if you come into a forest, and this is the thing that we don't do, right? We walk and we look, but you know, take the kids and just grab some of this. And, oh, it's that, that musty smell, but it's, it's just the soil and everything in there. And this is, oh, my goodness, amazing stuff here. And, of course, what it is... Um, it's, it's from the leaves that have, have fallen down. In fact, if you look across the region here, there are a whole bunch of different types of leaves and also you'll see some pine needles. Um, and if we go back to grade six science, right, the leaves, you know, produce the energy for the tree during the growing season. So you're talking about um, the photosynthesis, right? So the leaves with carbon dioxide, uh, it will produce uh, with water molecules, glucose, and of course, the oxygen that we breathe. But in, in the fall, the tree says, you know what? This is too much energy. We're shutting down the plant. Uh, so the production of uh, and the use of the leaves are no longer valid because it just takes too much energy and they want to go in hibernation mode. We want to sleep uh, during the fall season. So what will happen is that the leaves of course drop. So those leaves when they're down in the ground it starts to uh, you know off gas some of the compounds and, and some of that is the oil that is you know on, on the coating of the leaves, the plants. So all those different types of oils now start to off-gas on the ground. And what's fascinating, you know, you can also see some of these pine needles here. I mean, there's quite a few, right? And the pine needles, you know, these are from uh, coniferous trees. Um, this would be, you know, something that's called pinene. And that's one of the compounds. And, you know, pinene, pine. It's that pine smell, right? Uh, and, of course, you probably smell it more uh, you know, when it's still full of nourishment and it's green. But all of these together with the other, you know, decomposing matter, I mean, there's twigs and stuff here, all of that is, in, in essence, fermenting. But what it's doing is that it's giving a huge nutrition boost. And you know that because the organisms are feeding on it. And when you look around, you know, as Ricardo was showing you, some of the mushrooms here, you see? This one has fallen apart, but there's another one right there. And then on this log, you can see. So these, these microorganisms, 
you know, are the spores, right? And they're, they're feeding them. I mean, this is a feeding frenzy. And then you're starting to see everything is popping to life. And, and that's how you know, if you have mushrooms on your property, some go, ah, it's actually a great indicator that, you know, your soil is very healthy. This, it, nature's doing what it's supposed to do. In fact, the pine needles that I pointed out, um, it, it's very um, healing. It has healing properties. It repairs its own wounds on the tree. So, you know, these are just some things that I, I don't think we, we tend to connect with. And that's what the fall season is about. I, I just love, I mean, summer's a it's great season too. But I just love going through, and again, you're hearing the sounds, you're smelling the forest, and as we continue our journey this way, um, you know, that scent, by the way, you know, when you put all this material in, in a forest, as well in the summertime, they're called phytoncides. They're natural compounds that are released by the trees, and it's, an, it's a defense mechanism. You know, it defends the plants from bacteria, insects, uh, and things like that, and there are over 5,000 types of phytoncides. And not only are they beneficial for nature, but it has been scientifically proven that when you breathe it in too, it's good for your own health, your own well-being, scientifically proven. Good for the lungs to take it in, boost your immune system, number of things uh, that have been scientifically proven. So there's an added benefit. So when you walk by a forest and you take in that smell, there's so much more than just you know, rotting leaves. Right? And, and that's what I think we need to connect with and appreciate. And this is just a, a gem of a spot to do that. We still have quite a bit of canopy of leaves, uh, you know, uh, over our head, which is nice. Uh, and I wanted to get into, as we stream live here at the Maple Nature Reserve in Vaughan, uh, into your fall color report, in fact, and show you some of the colors that we are dealing with across the region. And boy, what a difference a week makes. Uh, even in the GTAs, we bring up the fall color report. You know, we went up from 50% last Friday. Friday to 80% uh, color change uh, today and even a 30% uh, leaf fall rate. Muskoka is over 90% color change uh, and I know also significant um, significant uh, fall uh, leaves are falling. The Halliburton area we've got also over 90% more than half the leaves are gone pending uh, the area that you're going in. Niagara is sitting at 50 percent and then the eastern Ontario, the Prince Edward County area, um, also a huge jump in color but a 90 percent color change too and you will uh, notice that you know the next rain and wind that comes through it's really going to be dropping some of those leaves so if you want to get out I would do it certainly today and you'll have a part of the weekend uh, to do it as well. And we'll get to your forecast in just a moment. But as we continue streaming live here, the AKQ asking you, what is your favorite smell? And I want to uh, say hello again to so many of our viewers as we continue our live tour through one of the trails. Uh, Shauna says, I was in Halliburton for Thanksgiving and the colors were gorgeous. Uh, Bob Gibson is joining us. Uh, Kathy says, isn't that the truth, eh, Laura? He always makes you feel like you want to be there too. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. <laughs> and I, I'm following up that second comment. So Laura says, I wish I was there. Take a deep breath for me. Okay, I'm going to take a collective breath. Ready? Oh, we got to get a better background than the garbage. <laughs> we don't want to smell that. Okay, ready? One, two, three. This is, I think this is the world's first collective deep breath inside a forest live stream. Ready? Oh, don't you feel better? Oh, yeah. I'm feeling great. So. You feel younger, that's right, yes. Yeah, now we're going into the younger part, right? It's like cocoon. Won't get any older and we'll never die. We'll come out 25, guys. Uh, so here, this is another beautiful path here. I'll get to the forecast in a moment, and then I'm going to uh, show you what we are typically looking for in terms of this one feathered friend that inspired a cartoon character. Um, because there are little signals, little signatures, I should say, that you can look for. So look at this path here. Again, another just beautiful spot. And you know, sometimes when you come down to these places, you find a little rock and you just want to take a break. Just take a break, you know, bring your kids and then listen. What do they, what do they hear? 
you know, what animals are in there? What's on underneath their feet? What are they touching? I've talked about touching the barks of trees. So those are some ideas. Let's take a look at your forecast, guys. We're going to start off by letting you know that the weather is brought to you by the Big Blue Marble Podcast. Uh, listen along to undeniable stories of a changing planet and the amazing people trying to save it. You can listen to all the episodes uh, on your favorite podcast player and, of course, online at bigbluemarble.org. So now we've just come around from the other side and you can see here another magical spot. I mean, it's just gorgeous. You have the leaves, you know, coating the ground. You have some very mature trees. And it's interesting, you wanna be looking in the trees as we continue here on the bridge. Um, and, and I wanted to point something out there because it's, you know, one of the creatures that you want to look out for. Narita also says that she likes the smell of brewed coffee. And uh, uh, Haley is also saying that Halloween is just around the corner, that's for sure. And there is, uh, oh, Leah says there are so many, too many to, to pinpoint, pinpoint one wonder, wonderful smell of the forest. Yeah, absolutely. Cheryl's saying very peaceful. And also Margaret says, I love the smell of a home. A home fireplace, you know, when on a walk and you come out and then you smell the, the chimneys. I'm with you. I love that too. I love the scent of a wood burning, you know, stove or a fireplace. A absolutely. And Shauna says, I'm not ready for the cold. We've been spoiled. This is the reality. This is the real reality. Uh, but also, Linda says, bring on the fresh air. Pam says she lost her sense of smell over 10 years ago due to a virus and really missed the smell of the forest. Wow, you know, that actually is another signature. I'm, I'm not suggesting uh, you had COVID, uh, but that's another signature of COVID, the loss of sense of smell. And some people say it lingers on for a while. And I think we take it for granted, the sense of smell, but when you lose it, there's a lot of smells that you're like, I would love to have that back. So maybe it's a kind reminder that if you have it, use it. Look at this little stream here though. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, if you uh, are into photography, the water looks really clear. Just beautiful stuff here. Um, Jerry says, I brought my plants in last night, just in time because it is getting cold. Yes, that is what it's all about. And uh, Christina is joining us from the West Coast in for big storms. Yes, it has been very active on the West Coast, not only in the amount of rain, uh, Christina, and I don't need to tell you this, I know you're on Vancouver Island, um, and there's another system coming in on Sunday, but the temperatures, you guys have struggled on the West Coast, which normally you have in the mid-teens, you know, as we get into fall, but out in the East, uh, it has been balmy, and normally we get that push of cool air, so everything is flip-flopped. Uh, Faye says, looks calm and peaceful. Um, also, uh, Joyce says, I like the smell after a fresh rain in the spring. And also, carrot cake cooking. Well, that's pretty specific. <laughs> yeah, Richard's like, sign me up, I'm in. Uh, as we continue, though, to look around, I'm looking at the trees. And I can see from here, um, Ricardo will have to flip around to see it, but look at that tree over there with the holes in it. Because that is something that is a, a tattletale sign of what creature lives in here. And we're talking about the pileated woodpecker. And what's interesting here, this, it's a beautiful bird, by the way, normally found well north and east of Toronto in the Canadian Shield. Uh, so it's kind of cool uh, that they're found here. But a signature for them, do you, oh, you want to go down? That's great, Ricardo. Is that their, you know, holes are almost rectangular. You can see this. They don't do normally uh, just a round, and, and you know, their beak is like a chisel. But, I mean, this has been picked over, you know, a number of times. They're the largest woodpecker in North America. In fact, let me show you what it looks like. And more importantly, let me let you listen to what it sounds like as we roll this video of the pileated woodpecker as we stream live here in Vaughan at the Maple Nature Reserve. Listen in. That's something. And they're non-migratory, so they stay uh, put year-round to defend their territory. 
what? I mentioned about the cartoon character. Anybody see a similarity to Woody Woodpecker? That's indeed was the inspiration, affiliated Woodpecker for Woody Woodpecker, you know? And I, I'm not even gonna try to uh, do his laugh. You know the laugh, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, yeah. Well, that's not bad, Richard, that's not bad. I'll butcher it, so I won't. But I, I just think it's amazing. Again, one of the largest woodpeckers in North America. But these are things that you could look for, little signatures, little signs. And although this tree, uh, I mean, it's, it's gone. I mean, it's physically standing there, but it's dead. But they would be, you know, after all the little insects in there, right? And this is all, again, a balance of nature. Uh, their main source is carpenter ants, but, you know, they'll also eat uh, flies and caterpillars, even some wild fruits and nuts. But it's amazing, you know, to think a bird is doing that, you know. Think of the commitment. He's like, hey, and think about his headache. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Anyways, we get set to wrap up. I want to uh, get into the nod to nature because this is another amazing thing here. Uh, it was an unbelievable catch off the coast of Spain. It was a giant sunfish that was caught in the tuna nets. I want to roll this video as well because when you see this, you will be floored. I know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with sunfish. These things are huge. So this one in particular was 10 feet across, 9 feet wide. It was simply too heavy to even measure on the boat and it was uh, estimated at 4,400 pounds. And this particular sunfish is a protected species. It's known as the bumphead sunfish because, of course, the distinctive lump on its noggin. And they're the largest bony fish on the planet. And to think at birth, at birth, they're just a few millimeters in length, but grow more than 60 million times their size and morph into that familiar winged pancake shape. And marine bi biologists were very excited to see it because um, they were able to take some DNA samples, measure it, and it was only out of the water for a few minutes and they managed to put it back in and it swam away. But a true testament, you know, to the rare beauty that lives uh, in the deep depths of the ocean. And I was just, when I saw that, you just can't comprehend. I mean, it's the size of a vehicle and it's a sunfish, right? It's very cool. Anyway, listen, my friends, this is the time where I ask for your support. You know, uh, we want this to continue. Uh, we're going to have to look at the options as we get into the new year. But the more you uh, share this link, uh, follow the page, and also give me the thumbs up on the Parade of Hearts. It, it, it really builds the momentum of what we're trying to do in this program because I think it's very special. We're all part of, you know, I don't want to say a club because we're not exclusive we welcome everybody but the fact that we all sort of connect together each Friday and uh, share some stories together and learn and laugh as I say I think it's pretty unique and pretty special so let's keep it going and it only can grow with your help if you're watching the show on YouTube uh, I ask you to like and subscribe to the channel we try to grow that platform as well we are looking at also going live simultaneously on YouTube but it's all about the viewership so if you like it, please support it. And uh, if you have questions or comments uh, at all, by all means, uh, send it to me and I'll try to answer them. But just as we wrap up, I'm gonna just, uh, okay, Mind of Mind says, I do, Anwar. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. And Kathy says, thanks so much, so interesting. Uh, and Kathy also says, it does not look like a little sunfish that we're used to seeing when we were kids. Well, that's for sure. And Peter says, I do remember Woody. Sounds like my upstairs neighbors. <laughs> Sounds like your neighbors, his upstairs neighbors. Uh, well, okay, I, I don't know, is that good or bad? But it, it gave us a, uh, a chuckle, that's for sure. Uh, oh, and Laura says, people want the uh, the laugh, and where no, I'm not doing, well, shall I? Okay, maybe I'll try it on the way out, ready? All right, so on that note, I'm gonna say, have yourself a wonderful, safe, and happy weekend. I look forward to your company next week. And as we end this show, a tribute to the affiliated woodpecker. <laughs> That's as good as I got. Take care, guys. We'll see you here and there. Have a good day. <laughs>